Welcome to our L2 journey. So let's start with the design brief. The maximum angular velocity should not exceed 3000 RPM, which is 3000 revolutions per minute. The maximum coefficient of power, CP, should be obtained at a tip speed ratio between 3 and 8. CP is the maximum amount of power delivered to the turbine compared to the total power available. The tip speed ratio is defined as the ratio between the tangential speed of the tip of the blade and the actual speed of the wind, like how much faster is the blade rotating in comparison to the wind? Speaking of the wind, the turbine should be tested at wind speeds of 6, 8, 10, and 12 meters per second. In terms of manufacturing, rapid prototyping should be used with the dimensions restricted to 400 by 100 by 150 millimeters and the weight restricted to 200 grams. In order to maximize the power extracted from the turbine, we want to maximize the aerodynamic performance. Number one, we want to maximize the airflow through the turbine. We want to force as much air through the swept area as possible while minimizing the energy loss in the wake. This means we want to impart less reaction torque on the wake, which you achieve by reducing the torque produced by the turbine. This is compensated for by the blades rotating faster and achieving a higher angular velocity. We started with the assumption that our maximum power would be produced at the maximum angular velocity of 3000 rotations per minute at 12 meters per second wind speed. Taking out a maximum radius as 17.5 cm from the dimensional constraints, we calculated an optimum TSR of 4.4. With our TSR and radius fixed, we are left with the choice between a solid one or two bladed design, or a folding configuration with more blades. From an aerodynamic perspective, the fewer blades in a turbine the greater the power extracted, as more air can pass through the swept disc. Fewer blades are also preferable for weight and manufacturing reasons. The turbine can occupy all of the manufacturing volume without the need for a folding mechanism, which adds a potential structural failure point. This leaves us with the choice between one or two blades. While a single blade would be more efficient in extracting power, the need for a counterweight would exceed our weight restriction, so we chose a two-bladed configuration. Number two, we want to generate as much lift with as little drag as possible. The component of lift normal to the rotational axis produces the force to rotate the turbine. Drag acts in opposition to this force, which slows the turbine down and reduces the power it generates. So we want to choose an airfoil with a high CL to CD ratio. Many airfoils exist which fulfill this requirement, but we need to consider additional factors. For structural reasons, we don't want a section which is too thin. The turbine is relatively small, so we also don't want a section which is very sensitive to surface imperfections. Finally, we want a section with benign stalling characteristics to give us a margin of safety in testing. One series of airfoils which satisfies all these requirements is the S-series specifically developed by the National Renewable Energy Laboratory for wind turbines. Initially, we decided to use three sections for the root, middle and tip of the blade, each optimised for the aerodynamics of each region. After some brief analysis, we found that the weight of using three different sections was excessive without producing much aerodynamic benefit, so we chose to just use the S834 tip section as this is the highest CL to CD ratio. To ensure we achieve this value, we designed the twist of the blade to meet the corresponding angle of tack along the span. We also want to find a way of reducing the total drag of the blade. One way of doing this is by reducing the strength of the tip vortex. The wingtip vortex is a swirling mass of air produced as the blade generates lift and is a significant contributor to the induced drag. To reduce the size of this vortex, we decided to use wingtip sails, inspired by the wingtip feathers of a large soaring bird. The position of the sails was optimized in CFD. The sails disrupt the formation of the main wingtip vortex by producing smaller, counter-rotating vortices. Our CFD simulations also showed the interface between the blades and spinner produced a lot of turbulence and hence drag. We found that by making the spinner as long and slender as possible, we could reduce this to a minimum. Number three, we want to keep the circulation constant because it maximizes the blade efficiency. To keep the circulation constant, the cord needs to be inversely proportional to the radius. However, this would give unrealistically large quad values at the root, which would bring us over the weight limit. We consulted literature and found the Schmidt chord distribution, which we discovered gave us more favorable values. To achieve the aerodynamic performance we model, we need to ensure the turbine can withstand the aerodynamic and centrifugal forces it is subjected to. We need to ensure that the stress on the root of the blade, mostly caused by the centrifugal forces, are not beyond the critical stress of the material. We want to minimize the bending of the blade to ensure that it is as close to the rigid aerodynamic model as possible. 
To model the structural behavior of the turbine, we discretize the blade into section and calculate the resultant lift and drag force on each. We use this to compute a load distribution across each blade and approximate it as a rectangular cantilever beam. To ensure the blade more accurately reflect this model, we align the airfoil section such that their centroid form a straight line along the spine. Well, this isn't a very accurate model of the blades, as it neglects torsional effects and the fact the loading distribution rotates along the span. The small size of the turbine means the structural limitation should be minimal to begin with. So making such an approximation should provide a reasonable model of the structural behavior. The hub was manufactured using a multi-stage process. First, a cylindrical billet was put into the CNC lid to reduce the diameter. Then, using a four-axis machine, the cylindrical billet was milled to a hexagonal cross-section area. Finally, the hub was separated from the base using a parting tool on the CNC lathe. The turbine was 3D printed in ABS plastic using a fused deposition method. For maximum strength, the turbine was oriented such that the fiber directions were parallel to the span direction. 3D printed objects typically have a rough surface finish. Aerodynamically speaking, it is very important to reduce the surface roughness to minimize drag. To do this, we use different grades of sandpaper to smooth the surface, ensuring we never sand it in just one direction as this would have created scratches. Instead, we use circular motion so that the surface would not have a recognizable pattern. In testing, we found that although the turbine would spin at all wind speeds, as soon as the braking force was applied at 6 and 8 meters per second, turbine would stall. This is as we anticipated. The small size of the turbine produces low torque and the turbine blades only achieve their optimum operating angle of attack at 12 meters per second. We also found that the turbine had relatively stable power generating performance over a range of RPMs at 10 and 12 meters per second and benign stalling characteristics. This is likely due to our choice of airfoil. Due to practical constraints, we have no way of confirming the effectiveness of our bio-inspired wind tip. But despite an inability to model their effects, they appear to have no detrimental impact on our performance. Our maximum CP of 0.11 is not especially high, but it is comparable to other turbines of similar size. Finally, we demonstrate that our maximum CP was achieved at a TSR of 4.4 as designed. Overall, our design approach was very conservative. Our choice of a smaller, non-folding turbine ensured the modeling assumptions we made were more accurate, and hence that we could be more certain of achieving our performance targets. On the other hand, this was at the expense of maximizing our CP. In hindsight, our turbine was over-engineered as it could theoretically have been made lighter for the same performance by reducing the wild thickness of the spinner and potentially hollowing the blades. Reducing the core of the blade near the root would also have reduced weight and may have reduced the overall drag of the turbine and improved performance. We could have improved the power generation performance by using a different airfoil section with greater CLCD values at the expense of the benign stalling characteristics of the S-series. Further improvements in CP could certainly have been gained by using a larger folding design, as many other groups demonstrated the effectiveness of this approach without creating a failure point. Thank you for watching this short video on how we designed, manufactured and tested our wind turbine. This was a great opportunity for us to apply our knowledge and showcase our passion for design and engineering.